Good morning. It is Dean Z speaking to you from my basement with a special edition today. It's a little bit of a different format. It is the A to Z edition of the A to Z's of applying to law school. Specifically, what you need to think about if you're going to apply this year, whenever you make that decision, what are the things you should do to get yourself in order? And first thing I want to emphasize before we begin is calm down. There's plenty of time to get all this done. You do not need to be starting at the time um, this video is going to get released. There's lots of different times to start, but this is like the timeline of what you need to get, get done um, in order to bring it all together. And I personally think it is nice to have sort of a chart of where I am going in any big project like applying to law school. Pretty big project. All right, so this came about because I overheard a young relative telling someone else that he was thinking about applying to law school this year. And I was like, why would you talk to someone other than me or before me about this topic? But no worries, brought it together, sat him down, lectured at him for like 10 minutes straight, like I'm gonna do with you. And uh, now he's on the, the right path. Okay, so first of all, the LSAT. This is, I'm not going to go into depth in any of these topics because these are all big topics of their own, but so this is sort of a surface level discussion of all this. So LSAT, have a plan. Maybe you've already taken it, which is the case of my young relative, or maybe not. If not, look at the LSAC website, check out when are those tests being offered, figure out what works with your schedule, and then build in two to three months to prepare for the test. Boom, done while you're on the LSAC website, register for candidate referral service. That will make schools reach out to you. You may learn about schools that you otherwise might not have been particularly interested in, or you may be getting fee waivers from schools that you are interested in, and uh, every little bit helps, am I right? Okay, next, your letters of rec. Think about who you want to have write them. Um, this should be somebody who knows you well. There should be um, ideally some mix of faculty and employment, I think. Um, again, it's a topic that's a big topic. I will get into it in detail in some future date, but let's just go for the sake of argument with uh, two faculty letters and one employment letter. You got to reach out to people in advance. You got to give them a lot of time. You got to say like, here's what I'm hoping to have uh, this all wrapped up. Does that timeline work for you? you know, blah, blah, blah. Make sure you give plenty of notice. Uh, and, and if you already have um, letters of rec put aside because you knew a couple years ago you were going to apply and you got that all taken care of, that was the case of my young relative, um, not bad to follow up with those letters of rec writer, letter of rec writers. Um, say like, hey, here's what I'm doing. Um, do you want to refresh that letter? Right? Maybe not, it depends on your relationship with that person, but if you've had any kind of ongoing relationship, wouldn't be bad to freshen up a letter that they already wrote. Doesn't take that much effort for a person and they're usually pretty willing to do it. So you've got all that next mechanical thing to take care of, your transcripts. You need to order them from whatever higher ed institution we are talking about, you know, wherever you went to undergrad, wherever you took any colleges or universities you took courses in in high school, sometimes people do that any uh, places you took like a summer course that wasn't the place that you actually graduated from, um, any place you did graduate work, of course. Usually you don't need study abroad transcripts unless you've been there for a, a full year. Uh, usually that's a kind of tricky area too. Um, so I'm not gonna go into that in great depth, but you might wanna check out the rules that described on LSAC or at particular law schools, but in general, don't have to worry about the study abroad transcripts. Um, but get all those in order, request those, and make sure they're submitted to the Law School Admissions Council, because they have to get processed by the Law School Admissions Council uh, in order to put them all together in this score report that they'll send to schools. So the more lead time you have on that, the better. Just get that out of the way. Um, and next, speaking of schools that you might be applying to, that's what you got to do next. Figure out where you think you might want to apply. At this stage in your proceedings, you should be 
getting cozy with Excel or some similar product because what you want is a list of all the schools you're considering and then various columns about what their requirements are. So, um, you know, when you're thinking of your list, think about what you, you know, some idea of your LSAT and GPA, looking at what their uh, medians are, but see the episode, previous episode about medians, the mediums themselves, medians themselves are not do or die, but they give you some kind of rough idea of, uh, you know, what might be a reach school in terms of the numbers, what's a safety school in terms of the numbers, and what's sort of in the middle of your range. Think about, you know, so you think about your qualifications for a school, think about geography, think about a school's reputation, think about uh, what kinds of jobs the people at those schools go on to. You might want to come up with a list of uh, 10 to 12. I would say your life will be a lot easier if you're applying to six or seven law schools, but, uh, you know, 10 to 12 is a good starting point. Um, I know people apply to like a ton sometimes, but I think that means you're not doing as good a job on each of those applications. And I would always counsel um, doing fewer excellently than doing a ton half-assedly. That's one of my favorite sayings. You can definitely quote that. Um, okay, so anyway, figuring out where you want to apply and then the kinds of columns you, you need to have are um, information about how, you know, do they offer optional essays? Um, do they, uh, how many letters of rec do they require? Um, you know, mechanical things like that, it's, they're going to be a little bit different for each school. And then, you know, what's their application deadline, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that you can keep track of all the little pieces of your application at all these different schools. Next, you want to start working on your personal statement, start thinking about it. Again, might want to refer to the earlier episode about that, but you want to think about uh, what you're going to say, what are all the pieces that you need to bring together. Um, obviously, start cleaning up your resume. You're going to want to proofread that 100,000 or so times so that there aren't typos in there and that you make sure you've included everything that makes sense for you. And then, again, optional essays of school allows for those. Uh, think about which ones or one you might want to write. The whole process um, should take you a couple months, you know. Um, it's really more of an organizational issue than anything else. And that's why the Excel thing comes in handy because it's going to play out over the course of a, of a few months. And it is just great to have everything in one place. Uh, yeah. So that's what you need to be doing. Write it all down. Get started. You got this. It's going to be easy. Not going to do grammar today because this was a special edition. So I'm just going to say thanks for watching. Feedback below. Um, send us an email, law.jd.admissions at umich.edu. Put blog in the subject line if you have any suggestions or topics or any feedback you want to give. And um, finally, many, many thanks to Dustin Johnston, who is on vacation while I am recording this. I don't even know what's going to happen with this. All right. Have a great day, wherever you go. Go Blue.